What's happening everybody? Welcome back to my channel, Danny FYR, find your reason. I'm Danny B, aka Stan, aka whatever the you want to call me. Uh, anyway, in today's video, I've just found one there. It's uh, going to be a top 10 video. So, uh, this one is top 10 secret service tactics that are insane. So let's have a look what to do with presidents and whoever heads other heads of state, people who are worth money, you know, the one percenters. Let's see. So this video is by Paradigm, by the way. So if you want to go subscribe to their channel, go over there. But more importantly, subscribe to my channel, please. I need more subscribers. I only have five at the moment, so please subscribe. Anyway, with all that out of the way, let's uh, dive into this video. It takes a lot to protect the President of the United States. Here are 10 Secret Service tactics that are insane. Number 10, Ink Library. The Secret Service has the world's largest collection of ink. The Secret Service works in conjunction with ink manufacturers, where they have a massive database of tags in the ink. These tags allow Secret Service agents to narrow down the brand of any type of ink. They can also trace where that brand is sold in the country. So should the president receive a threatening letter, they can trace, to an extent, where that letter may have originated from. They also have a team of handwriting experts that inspect the handwriting of any letter that has a threatening word in it. That is crazy, that isn't it? The amount of time and money spent just on that alone. Just on that one thing alone. That is, yeah, that is pretty insane. Number nine, protective intelligence. The president is the target of many online comments. Some of these comments suggest a threat to him, but are likely not serious. However, every single threat is investigated by a team of Secret Service. Big news today, we're launching the Lifestyle Trader Challenge 2022. What is that about? I'll tell you what it's about. As agents, when someone posts anything about wanting to cause the president any kind of harm, even if it's only in jest, Every single aspect of that person's life is investigated. Friends, employees, neighbors could all be interviewed. This is known as protective intelligence, and it is conducted to deem the seriousness of the threat. Ap even if it's only in jest, so even if you're only joking about something, so remember that in for the future. Don't joke or anything about the president. Because your whole life, your whole family's lives, your friends' lives could be investigated. Not worth that, like, nah, I won't be doing nothing like that. After an investigation is done, the agents will determine whether or not the person in question should simply be warned, should be submitted for a psychiatric evaluation, or should be convicted of a Class E felony. Yeah, you don't want none of that, like, save all that trouble, just... Don't write nothing about the presidents joking about them or anything. I'm not joking about this neither. I'm being serious. So no president's jokes were included in this video. <laughs> Number eight. Agents are trained to spot guns. Impromptu presidential greetings are a nightmare for Secret Service agents. Dealing with large crowds poses a threat for them, as they can't know what someone in the crowd might do. As such, Secret Service agents are highly trained to look for weaponry within a crowd. They scan for people who have their hands stuffed in their pockets, for people wearing baggy clothing, and even for people who seem to be moving stiffly on one side of their body because they might be concealing a weapon. The Secret you can imagine that is the most uh, hard part of the job, like, all them crowds, <clears throat> all 
all them crowds like you just said you don't know what any of them could be planning so that could be really hard because they might be concealing a weapon the secret service is famous for their dark sunglasses but those shades aren't just to shield their eyes from the sun's rays they wear dark glasses so they can hide their eyes while scanning the crowd this way any potential suspects are not alerted to the fact that they are being watched so the server purpose before we move on be sure to subscribe to daily top tens with notifications on so you don't miss any of our videos number seven water rescue detail one of the many perks of being the president is a lifetime hold up did that's a daily top tens when i looked at the channel name it was paradigm so if you want to subscribe why they're all i don't know Move on. Be sure to subscribe to Daily Top Tens with notifications on so you don't miss any of our videos. Number 7. Water Rescue Detail One of the many perks of being the president is a lifetime of protection. Even after his presidency, the president is promised protection wherever he goes. Now, a lot of retired presidents seek R&R in tropical places where swimming and water sports abound. But to ensure the president remains safe, a specific group of Secret Service agents are put on water rescue detail. These agents accompany any president, whether active or not, to any place that has water. They are highly trained in any and all of the dangers that water poses. This is mind blown to me. Like all the money that's been spent for all this, can you imagine? Absolutely crazy. Number six. CAT agents. CAT agents are the Secret Service's most elite and highly trained agents. They carry SR-16 carbines with them, which are very powerful rifles. The process to become a CAT agent is extremely grueling. When someone is selected, they must first undergo a week of preschool. If they make it through that, they graduate to an intensive six-week training camp. CAT agents are required to run a mile and a half in nine minutes, to wear a 45-pound vest, and to be highly skilled with weaponry. They must also be very intelligent. During their training, they go through arduous stress tests and most applicants drop out. Their job is to provide cover for the president if he is under attack. They are trained to engage in direct assault combat to give other agents time to get the president to safety. Right, right. Number five, the president's motor pool. The president's main mode of transportation is aptly named the Beast. It is a customized... Obviously, it's bulletproof to bits and everything. I'm, I'd imagine it could uh, survive a certain certain bomb blast and everything. Um, yeah, it, it might tell us something in any way. I'll stop babbling. It's a Cadillac limousine that has over seven tons of armor. The armor is up to eight inches thick in places and can withstand high caliber gunfire or even an explosive device. There you go. But the protection doesn't stop there, as the beast is never alone. The president's motor pool consists of a whole line of vehicles, including a discreet black van that holds the counter assault team, otherwise known as the C-80. In total, there are a dozen vehicles in the president's motor pool, and each vehicle costs over a million dollars. Number four, food screening. Yeah. When presidential chefs are preparing food for the president, they are under strict scrutiny by Secret Service agents. Every Make sure no one's trying to poison them, innit? Yeah, you never know. Every single one of their movements is... I was going to say something there, but no. It's best left unsaid. Screening. When presidential chefs are preparing food for the president, they are under strict scrutiny by Secret Service agents. Every single one of their movements is monitored to ensure that they are not poisoning the president. White House chefs are never alone in the kitchen. Furthermore, when the president travels, Navy stewards travel along with him and personally prepare his food. The president does not eat any food that has been gifted to him. Wow. And although he sometimes orders food while out and about, he only does it for a photo op, as he never eats he doesn't anything even eat it. from a restaurant. Oh, wow. I didn't even know that. That's crazy. Go out to a restaurant, but they don't really eat the food. It's just a photo opportunity. 
Man, that's insane. These are insane, yeah. Number three, Systema Russian Combat. It's expected that Secret Service agents would be highly trained in weaponry and combat. They are, after all, protecting the president. But some Secret Service agents are more highly trained than others. Some are trained in a Russian martial art called Systema. Systema stands for the system, and it was originally used by military personnel like the KGB and Spetsnaz. Oh. It is unlike any other martial art. It is known for its brutality and its anything goes mentality. I've never heard of it. Systema involves controlling the attacker's levers, arms, legs, and elbows. It also involves defending against weapons and weapon disarmament. People trained in Systema are trained to deal with multiple attackers at the same time. They are also trained to remain very calm while under attack. Systema is not just a combat tactic, it's a way of life. And people who are trained in this uncommon martial art are expected to live the virtue of the martial art. And although someone practicing Systema appears calm and completely in control, don't let the calmness fool you. Systema is a highly dangerous martial art style. Secret Service agents trained in Systema can easily kill an attacker, although their goal is to disarm, not kill. Number two, Advanced Secret Service Team. Every single place that the president goes is first scouted out by the advanced yeah, secret of course service team. You'd expect that, like. This team arrives before the president to do a thorough check of the entire area that the president is visiting. For example, if he is visiting a school, the team arrives first and inspects every corner of the school, including the bathroom stalls and inside the classroom cupboards. They will even go to nearby hospitals to obtain a list of anyone in the area that has been recently treated for mental illness and released. Cup of tea. They literally leave no stone unturned in their preemptive search of the area. They take over entire hotels. When the president travels, his entourage of Secret Service agents travel with him. But whenever he stays in a hotel, his Secret Service agents conduct a background check on any of the hotel employees that might be in contact with the president during his stay. If any employee has any sort of criminal record, then that employee is asked to stay home from work during the president's visit. Wow. The team also completely takes over the entire floor the president is staying on, as well as the floor above and below. Hello. And they take over elevators for their own personal use, even going as far as to hire an elevator repairman to stay on standby should anything go wrong with the elevator. Number one. Wow. That, uh, and I'm just thinking though, like, the amount of money that all this must amount to. And this is insane. These tactics are insane. But I suppose you have got to keep the the members of state safe. You know. Ten minute medicine. If the president is attacked or suffers any kind of medical emergency, there is protocol in place to increase his chances of survival. A select number of special Secret Service agents are assigned to the Presidential Protection Division, otherwise known as the PPD. These selective agents have the responsibility of protecting the lives of the Commander-in-Chief and his family. As such, they are trained in something called 10-Minute Medicine. 10-Minute Medicine involves doing everything in their power to keep the President alive until he can get help from other medical professionals. Now, this might sound reasonable because the president is very important. However, the concept of 10-minute medicine in this case involves some pretty insane protocol. Yeah, the For example, every time the president travels, the PPD know exactly where the nearest medical facility is within a 10-minute radius. Mm -hmm. And they even have an agent stationed at that facility. This agent is responsible for becoming familiar with all the doctors and nurses on shift. Yeah. The PPD is also responsible for ensuring that there are bags of blood in the president's car, which match the president's blood type, just in case an emergency transfusion is needed. Wow. The PPD's training in 10-minute medicine proved useful when they saved President Reagan's Reagan, life yeah. during the 1981 assassination attempt. The year I was However, born. it seems like a lot of time and energy to prepare for something that likely will never happen, which is why the PPD's 10-minute medicine and all the protocol involved 
has earned the top spot on this list of 10 Secret Service tactics that are insane. Yeah. Well, I definitely agreed with that video. I found them some of that insane. The lengths they go to, you know. But I suppose they've got to. The presidents and heads of state, prime ministers. So they've got to keep them alive. But yeah, I enjoyed that one. It was, uh, as stated, pretty insane, the tactics. So yeah, it was a good video. So I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, I'll be doing another video after this one. I don't know what on yet, so we'll wait and see. But uh, for this one, I'm out. I'm Danny B, a.k.a. Stan, a.k.a. whatever the fuck you want to call me. And until next time, you know how it is. Peace.